Right, absolutely fantastic. You're still hanging out with us right here. And this is why in the morning. This is the last segment of today's show. But first things first, you can always interact with us on our social media at Y244 channel everywhere. Mine is at Brian Sako 101 and the hashtag is why in the morning. By the way, just a recap for the previous guest who's been here, Geoffrey Munai. If you want to be in touch with him, his number is 0707161298. 0707161298. That's definitely how you can catch him and get to engage with him regarding what exactly he was talking about right here with Kalamiva. But back to the business at hand, my good name is Sankwa and welcome back. Uh, we're going to talk about the world of fashion and events organizing. How do you go about it and what are some of the interesting opportunities that are in there for you, especially as a young man? And joining us live in studio with us is uh, Julius Kibagendi. He is the CEO of, uh, let me get the name right, Julimo Collections. So he's going to tell us how he became a CEO and if he's hiring very soon, by the way. You can always drop your CVs. You know, everybody's looking for a job. Me too. Me too. You never know. But welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome, bro. Uh, first of all, uh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the invite. Okay. Thank you for the invite to the interview. <coughs> all right, you're welcome. You know, when, when CEO pops up, in any in any sitting <laughs> the perception is this person has some level of cash yes. this person has some level of networks yeah. i don't know from your experience and what you hold in your company and all the things that you do does it ring a bell is it a relevant conversation that you know once i'm a ceo there's some expectations that come towards me like people are like hey bona soon it after cars soon it after 50k do you meet that a lot yeah i can say i have uh, i have a sustainable Mount to sustain my business and to sustain my operation. Okay, okay about business is about growth. Uh, when you are young, you remember when you were, we used to be young, there's levels that you would take. You started from nursery, you grew, you grew, you grew. So as a young CEO, okay, there's much expectation from our society, but uh, time with time we are working on ourselves, okay. and soon enough we'll be big and huge brands to the world. Okay. So we don't succumb to the pressures that comes with the society whenever you tell somebody you're a you're CEO. A CEO. Uh -huh. But uh, every day I'm working on myself, okay. I'm bettering on myself, mm -hmm. and also I'm attracting some money to sustain me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> sounds like a humble story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But now back, back to you, just yeah. a brief uh, background of how you became you know, what you are, and then now combining it to events. Uh, perhaps we can start with the fashion part since you're a fashionista. Yeah, the, the journey of fashion started when I was young. My mom was my greatest mentor in fashion because when, when I was young, he used to go to, <coughs> to the market, bring me some hot stuff like uh, shoes, like nice clothes, and everybody in our estate, we used to live in Kayole, was like, wow. Mm -hmm. That's a nice, uh, nice dress. That's a nice uh, hat hair. So I grew up with that passion. Uh, I level up. So when I, when I was in, actually in secondary school, I started uh, developing passion towards uh, fashion and event organizing. Mm -hmm. So I think everything was came up because the way I was brought up. Okay. So I wanted to to venture into fashion industry because I wanted to impact life for many people. Okay. Because many people want to look nice and presentable whenever right. they go to places of right. work or whenever they want to do wedding right. or whenever they want to go to event, they want to look nice. So actually that was my main game of venturing into this business. Right. I, I, I caught that part where you're from, Oyola. Yeah, Kasabun. <laughs> <laughs> it has so many names and so many songs around it. Yeah. But, you know, big in Kayole, and now you are here. And then you also you went to the University of Nairobi. You'll tell us what you studied there. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, there, there's usually like faint hopes when you come from such a community because it uh, the, the way it has a reputation of you know people that are not so much successful. Even when it comes to the music industry, which is uh, purely also inter intercepted with what you do. Yeah. There are so many stories of like, you know, I just come from Kayole and uh, yeah. But it, but again, it, it seems like you had a lot of inspiration. You mentioned your mom, yeah. you know, supporting you. Like, who are some of the hottest guys in fashion that you looked up to during that time in Oyole? Oh, okay, for me, my dream was 
uh, above Oyole uh -huh. because I wasn't looking for the people in the local uh, fashion industry. Mm -hmm. I was looking for people like Gucci who are doing really, who, who, have, who have done really amazing okay. job. Mm -hmm. For me, my inspiration, even living in the hoods of Kayole, you remember? It was like, an accomplishment. Uh, it was not such an accomplishment, but it was a motivation for me. Okay. Because uh, personally, what inspires me most is uh, whenever you are, you are given an obstacle, you mm. have to raise beyond it. Right. So, kuna hii tagline nasema, tunataka kutoka kwa hoods. Yeah, so, mostly by the ghetto people. Yeah, by the ghetto people. Mm -hmm. So, I've seen guys who have moved from Kayole, they are now living in Kilimani. They have made good life. Yeah. Kuna, As a, I want to serve like an inspiration to to the guys who are living even in ghetto. Okay, course. sorry. Is yeah. that sheng word that you use for that? Mse ama. Yeah, There's ametoka. a word. <laughs> yeah. uh, There's like a word Dream around. ni kutoka kwa block. Oh, dream ni kutoka kwa block. So uh, mse kitoka kwa block ame omoka. Ame omoka. Wow. Yeah. Do you feel like umetoka block? <laughs> of course, umetoka block. <laughs> Kido, kidogo. <laughs> but uh, sijafika mwisho bado. Still, I'm going on going. All right. Yeah. Uh, do you know the likes of Kina Diman Mukare, uh, Dwayne yeah, Sharpa? Yeah, we have uh, I've heard of. You've heard of them? Yeah. I think they were big during those 2015, 2014. I had just joined campus for my diploma. And they yeah. were like, the guys were going to shake 254, get a fashion, or mm. going in the house. So you thought maybe you started together with the rest of the color fashion guru since you said you know him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, those people also inspired me into fashion. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, I wanted to, you know, when you are starting something, maybe your passion, you know, you have to follow your own route at the end of the right. day. Mm -hmm. So, okay, they are great people, but uh, I said I was not only inspired by the, the, the local, local guys, people, but, but I was also inspired brands. by international guys. Okay. Because what is happening even in, in our fashion industry right. is because we just want to dwell here in Kenya. Right. But if we expand our mind and uh, see how we can we, how can we produce to the international markets, right? Then uh, we'll foster, we'll really thrive. Okay. Yeah, we don't look at only on the local people and the local market, but also we look into international market. Yeah. So that has really made me flourish. I've, I've got clients from even from international people, like Nigeria, Tanzania. Yeah, even from all over. Switzerland. Uh huh. Finland. And how do you deliver since you now <laughs> have clients from Switzerland? Uh, how me, do you make uh, an outfit and get to them? Uh, during events, I, I usually get uh, a lot of clients in events because whenever they see your outfit, they say, I want to rock out with this. Yeah. Like this outfit. one you have, Uku, somewhere I don't know, on a Friday, and then somebody says, yeah, I, I just want this. Uh -huh. And then he's telling, I will catch a flight by uh, around three days. I tell him, okay, let me deliver by that time. I'll okay. give it back to you. So mm -hmm. that's how I get international clients. Right. So my point of view is like uh, my youth lazima to You have if you have a passion, you have also to be self-driven mm -hmm. for you to achieve your goals. Right. So you have to go out there. You have to be crazy for that dream. Just tell right. people, you know, I'm doing this and this, and I have, and I have this idea. Please promote me. Right. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I think we should also get to the name of your brand clearly. Uh, uh, what is the name of your brand, and what does it represent? Uh, okay, <coughs> my, the name of my brand is called Julimo Collection. Okay, Julie is my name, Julius, and then okay. M-O, that's Mogaka, that's my father's name. All right. So, Buakire. it is like a, <laughs> Buakire, <yeah. Nice. laughs> it is like abbreviation, <laughs> but uh, it sounds cool because it was a nickname in high school. Okay. I used to entertain people, I used to dance, so uh -huh. they like nickname me Julimo, so it was no. really fantastic. Dancer fashion. Uh, because of it was in Akwanga twins. Yeah, they're like twins. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So that's how it stuck. And now uh, here it is, it's a business. You know. Yeah, it's now mm -hmm. a business. Yes. And officially, when did you like um, spread your roots and finally get grounding in the Kenyan market, in the fashion, fashion market in Kenya? Uh, it was like two years ago. But uh -huh. the whole plan started like uh, three years, uh, like five years ago. Mm -hmm. So. In every business, I think if you want to venture to business, first of all, you, you have to know the risk, you have to know the people, you have to know, connect well. Mm -hmm. You don't just wake up and start a business. 
right. you have to reconnect you have to know the risk of that business mm. the people to hire the people to work with your target audience uh, yeah. the target audience mm -hmm. what is the profit margin do you want to achieve at the end of the day right. how you want to deal with the pressures that we comes with the business yeah the so, bad times and the good times uh, the good times <laughs> how will you succumb to the pressures Right. And everything, looking for a building, uh, a place to start your business, business. it mm -hmm. took me time. So it took me like uh, three years of preparation okay. when I kick-started my business. So when officially did it pick up, you can kupata customers, yani masimu zinaingia, they be like, hey, Julimo, niadze, nataka, blah, 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 like back to back. When did it officially pick up? Uh, actually, let me, ta let, me, let me say 2022. Mm -hmm. That's last year. Uh, because I started... Uh, 2021 so it mm -hmm. uh, it was not easy mm -hmm. but uh, not easy meaning <laughs> you know, a lot of people say it was not easy yeah, but it was not easy because <laughs> ah, what happened? when you enter officially to a business you know mm -hmm. you have a lot of expectation okay now when you enter to the business now you real you face the real challenges right so the so ones you faced is it uh, it took a long time to get uh, clients who'd really trust me Mm -hmm. because uh, trust yeah, which is like a co-ingredient of every business, every business. and also relationships yeah. <laughs> a lot of uh, those who do like um, uh, tailor-made suits they mm -hmm. have a lot of trust issues with their fundies and wherever in what sense exactly because a fundi will tell you that you know i'll take like three days to finish your uh, attire mm -hmm. and you're going to an event so you come yeah. there <laughs> after three um, days Monday, yeah. wednesday wednesday uh -huh. By you Thursday, agree. Unaenda. Unaenda unapata ad, Are you agree. Unaenda unapata material. Mm. So that that's is the trust issues. The, that's the trust issue. Well, whenever mm. I could approach someone to tell me, no, you know, I don't trust fundies. Right. But I begged for them. I just told them, just give me the job. You see, I'll deliver. Okay. So with time, I develop uh, reliable clients who trusted me. Right. And they brought me a lot of people. They, right. uh, my business actually works through referral because whenever I do a good job, somebody will refer me to another person. Right. Yeah. So you've established that uh, relationship, your trust. Yeah, uh, trust is the most important thing in business. In business. Yeah. All right. Now, also, but like initially, before you started your business, who are, who are, who are like, what are some, what, what are, I'd say, what were some of the inputs, especially financially, because every business, anyways, we call it capital. Yeah. Uh, who are the main uh, supporters of your business and uh, maybe what did they contribute? Or maybe you personally started from a point of saving, say, save, you know, people say, nearly save Kwanzaa High School, and then Nikanzisha Kibanda Saizi Nikona Shopping Mall. I don't know your story with your brand. Uh, how did you come up with the capital? Did you get some handouts here and there? Was it like a gift? Did you save yeah. a loan or something, etc.? Uh, I can say uh, during back in the days, I think there's a one trend that Kenya knows. Mm -hmm. uh, students in campus, they usually do writing, a lot of oh, writing. online writing. Yeah, I started by doing writing, but writing is quite... Uh, tiresome and boring at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started by writing, I saved uh, some amount. Mm -hmm. And I also had a couple of guys who believed in my dream. So okay. some people invested to my business. Right. So that's how I kick started my business. All right. So uh, I'm looking at also, you know, as a, uh, when you're in campus, your, your guardian plays a huge role in yeah. support system. <coughs> Did yeah. you have support from your mother, your father, or in general, any guardian that actually injected in something? Uh, it is completely opposite. I didn't Why? receive their, their support, but uh, I was uh -huh. supporting them. Oh, you are supporting them, Kayole. but they were not supporting you. I'm coming you. from Kayole, so All I have right. to support my you parents. Know, uh, yeah, but yeah. you know, you <laughs> but uh, I thank God that you're here. You know. <laughs> yeah, sure. There's always they say there's always a broken there's always a broken part or a yeah. broken story about yeah. someone who's strong. Yeah, so I knew the, uh, the yeah. story of my parents, so mm. I couldn't stress them. But they okay. are real proud of me right now. Right now, uh -huh. are, are you like the firstborn? Uh, I'm actually the last born. Last born. Ooh, wee. Yeah, Kusumbua reloaded. <laughs> 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 but uh, good thing, oh Kusumbua. How many siblings? We are four siblings. Uh -huh. So um, there are three ladies, and I'm the last. The only boy child. The only boy child. Where, where, where? We like a sumbo. Full of responsibility. It's only. But anyway, so, uh, yeah. it's also good to be a last one. Maybe uh, as as uh, f f now for your business, uh, how 
or maybe what are some of the designs that you focused on in terms of uh, serving your clients zenye okay jua tu kienda kwa julimo definitely ni abcd abcd types of outfits which ones are you mainly uh, producing from your business okay before i answer your question also uh -huh. i also offer like um, uh, support to people who want to i can dress people i'm a okay. fashionista Right. And also, I offer technical support and advice to maybe people who, who want to look good. So, okay. so in short, even you're that's a, a part fashion of consultant yeah, fashion or an consultant. image consultant. Yeah, sure. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also a, a business on its own. Okay. Um, so you have a red card or something? <laughs> if you want to dress yeah, someone here, <laughs> you definitely would quote some amount. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But. Uh, uh -huh. You can find me on my pages, so we can really discuss on that. Okay, we'll so it depends with the uh -huh. what you want, what, uh -huh. what you want to acquire. Still on that, for a person now, uh, before you answer the question, so if somebody is watching right now and they want to consult uh, on how they should dress, like uh, what, what should they expect? Should they have some certain amount of money set aside before they talk to you? Because this is consultancy. Yeah, of course, you know, it's business. So business, you have to have some resources. Uh -huh. So lazima kwa na pesa ndo mbonge. It's not about even uh, pesa. Also uh -huh. it's about connection. Oh. There's a guy who connected me to Sonko. So I oh. really I really the did the ex governor. Yeah, the ex governor. So I really mm -hmm. did everything fashion consultants for free. No, so sometimes if you can bring something on board uh -huh. which is good uh, other than money. Than money. We can also yeah. talk business. It's not all about money because Wherever I am today is because of connection from friends and right. those who have supported Connections me. Connections in Nairobi. Eh, Muim. Eh. <laughs> omba, omba okonazo. <laughs> omba okonazo. Now back to the question. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the main designs that you produce? Uh, I do African also. I do African. I do suits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slim fit suits. Okay. And, uh, like yeah. the one you're wearing is a slim fit suit? Yeah. Slim okay. fit suit. Yeah. Why is it called slim fit? <laughs> I'm not from fits. the word for slim people <laughs> who are not. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. There's people have different sizes. Okay. So there's some people whenever they go to the shop to do maybe they want to unpick their suits. It's mm -hmm. so hard to get their their size perfect. Their size, size. perfectly. Mm -hmm. So we call it a slim fit because it fits you the way you are. Mm. So it is very comfortable with you. Mm. You know, you can wear something and you don't feel like you're comfortable with it. Yeah. So or usually, too, skinny, too baggy. Yeah, we deal with uh, what the clients want. Okay. So we sit in the table. You tell me you want maybe a baggy, or a skinny one, or a just a moderate things. Mm -hmm. So we put those details in the table and then we come up with something that you really you're yeah. looking for. All right, uh, uh, like a brief outfit, uh, like the one you got right now. Possibly, how much does it go for? For if I want to buy it, or someone watching wants to buy it, how much does it go for? And also, do you offer like ready-made outfits, like is it already pale or display, or as a camo pick? I might definitely have to start from scratch. Uh, uh, as I said before, we do with the, we deal with the slim fit mostly, so mm -hmm. we don't have ready-made, ready -made. but we have display. You can check on a display. Dummy uh, display. Uh, okay. display, but we usually deal with the. You just come, you just tell what you want, mm -hmm. and then we do the design for you. So, right. like my suit, it's mm -hmm. only cost. So this one is a slim fit, the one you got. Uh, slim fit. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a two piece. Mm -hmm. A two piece. A trouser and a blazer, mm -hmm. only fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Yeah. Which is some good amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> some good amount of money, right? Yes. There. All right. Now, also, also when, it, when it comes to our fabric, because uh, I believe your industry is more, it's, it's, it's like you guys are in the textile industry. Yeah, sure. Meaning uh, you have to buy fabric all the fabric, time. Fabric, yeah. And you know times, uh, you know maybe some of the types of fabric. Now for you, for your business, where yeah. do you get the fabric? Oh, we have uh, different sources of where we source our fabric from. And uh, being in the industry for, I think for the last five years, I've studied uh, a lot of I've done research on fabrics, mm -hmm. so I can uh, I, I know where shapes? to source them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know how to source them, but that one you can maybe if you come to my shop, I'll really advise you because there is fabric that you can wear during cold times. Yeah. There's uh, during when the, it is so hot in Kenya, so mm. 
there's su fabric for those times. For weather? Yeah, for the weather. Mm -hmm. And also, I like uh, my client to be satisfied because I don't want to give you a suit that uh, with time, if you take it to a laundry, after some few days, it starts fading. Mm. So we usually concentrate on the, on the quality of fabric. Okay. So in Kenya, okay, there are a lot of fabric in Kenya textile, but also there are a lot of fake fabric yeah. in there. How do you decipher fake and real? Yeah, it's through research. I'm okay. a scholar, I'm a, I'm a student, mm -hmm. so I do research on my own. Okay. So I could buy a lot, I could like uh, maybe make a short of uh, something mm -hmm. or a blazer. Yeah. And with time I can test this, this fabric is legit or not. Mm. So with time we are, we are having trusted people who, who we, really source, we, really source, we really source the fabric mm. from. So they're like constant suppliers to your business? Yeah, they are constant. Mm -hmm. But uh, it also depends. Sometimes we even import the fabric. Mm, from what? what country exactly? Um, like uh, Turkey. Turkey, they have uh, good fabric mm. for suits. Mm -hmm. Even though they are quite expensive. China? <laughs> China, often though. Mm. Yeah. But Turkey has the best, I uh, can say they have the best fabric. fabric. Somebody told me Ankara is best from Nigeria in South Africa. I don't know if you agree. Best uh, Ankara or African print is from South, Af South Africa and Nigeria. Yeah, I met, I met uh, some Nigerian designers. They really do amazing job. As in, the fashion industry in Nigeria has really grown. Okay. So I believe it can be true to some extent. But right. they are really doing an amazing job in the fashion industry. Right. And also because most Nigerians have really embraced their culture and the African culture. Okay. So they really prefer the African wear. Right. Other than to the maybe to the Western world, so mm -hmm. they have really improved. And even the Western world is boring the Nigerian. Now <laughs> we say now it's African culture. Yeah, they are African. borrowing some of their outfits or ensembles and yeah, using them following. in the music videos, fashion yeah, events. Yeah, fashion events. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Are you <coughs> able to tell a material is real or not real just by looking at it or feeling it? For me, I believe I can. It's like being able to distinguish a real do and a fake do. Yeah, I can really distinguish. Uh, just by touching or feeling? Yeah. Okay. Just by feeling the texture uh -huh. and even a close look. If okay. I look it closely, I'll, I'll just tell. All right. Uh, let's deep dive a little bit to your events side. Uh, yeah. You mentioned you also do events. Yeah. Uh, you network a lot with the people in that space as well. Yeah. But now it seems like fashion and events be any twins. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what are some of the recent ones in Kenya that you'd say they have put your business on the map? that you can recall in Leander, Nick attend, and it was really fine. I met some great people. Uh, after that, we could get and Mango, and we are kicking it till right now. Oh, uh, there's an event that happened uh, recently, it's called uh, Commoners. Uh, Commoners is uh, an event that brings uh, people from the whole world. Uh, actually, it is about uh, environmental conservation. Mm -hmm. So, this event brought literally everybody from all over the world. Okay. Like uh, people from Sweden, for people from Switzerland, people from from Indonesia, yeah. people from Canada, UK. Mm -hmm. And then <coughs> I think there I got a lot of clients because there's people who didn't carry their suits to the event. They tell me that, mm -hmm. can you do for us this and this? Because they were supposed to present. Yeah. And that one uh, actually increase the, the capitation to my business mm -hmm. and also uh, I would like to appreciate even our president he gave me an opportunity to be one of his events called Gaba Mukononi they were mm -hmm. launching the reason this happened last week actually yeah, last week yeah oh you were among the the, the the people who got some I was <laughs> I was invited oh you were invited <laughs> I was invited to the event uh -huh. so what so was your role in that event oh uh, my role I okay I because I do events also, I do, I do social media management. Uh -huh. So there was one of the guys who contacted me to do some social media management during that time. During that event. Uh, to run the hashtag there. Mm -hmm. So that's also is a side hustle. You know, Kenya is very tough, so you have to like think mm -hmm. big. Like it. you're everywhere in business. Yeah. I so also I got some clients to, 
to do business with. Yeah, to do business with. Were you paid for the gig? Because that was a big one, man. It was a yeah, big was one. Paid, yeah. It was like the president <laughs> launching over 5,000. Actually, yeah. it's 5,084 services I remember I was watching yeah. that yeah. were launched online. Yeah, sure. From health to interior. Yeah, you know? sure. Yeah. Oh, did they pay you? I was paid, but hey, we, were, we were... You guys, Mkiniona Leo Siko, Mr. Shanghai. Yeah, we do uh, some, because I've done, I've done some, I told you I've done some writing. Okay. So it, re, it has really exposed me to even doing articles, right. blogs. Uh, mm -hmm. So I did some social media awareness during that day, and it mm -hmm. was a great thing. Right. And I was also invited to the event. Okay. And I got some connection there. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And 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 you feel like it's it's also going to boost your business as time goes by. Yeah, it's boost because uh, business every day you have to increase your uh, like your the circle, base. the the yeah. client base. You have uh -huh. to increase it day by day mm -hmm. for you to sustain your business. Okay. You can't rely only only on the holder people or the the, the your holder clients. So you have to like to keep it uh, sustainable. You have to go to look. You have to look for other people. You have to network really well for your mm. business to flourish. Right, nice. Yeah. Um, um, uh, while you're saying that, uh, I, I remember, I think it was yesterday, there's this fashion, it's a French fashion thing that happened instead. And I was seeing the Kina Naomi Campbells and the Cardi B's and is the outfits all come, but like outfits Zao see normal. Yeah. Normal meaning, as in, and it's called, it's, it's like a, a, a seriously celebrated fashion event. Yeah. Then I was trying to look at it in Kenya. Uh, when you compare like uh, the fashion industry overseas and here in Kenya, what do you think makes us copy what they do? And why, well, you say, why can't we not use our African culture and export it instead of us importing theirs to us? Niwapi wana to wana to shindia? I can say we Kenyans we have low self esteem. Wow. <laughs> and we don't believe in ourselves. <laughs> yeah, most people that are met from abroad they just tell us we have a great culture. Yeah. We have the Maasai culture. Even from our communities we have our own culture, the way we used to dress. Uh -huh. If you can integrate this to our modern life, uh -huh. at least we can have something to share to the whole of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, like most Kenyans, if you ask them can you promote me, do some African art? Uh, they tell me, no, I'll, I'll prefer to go to Amutumba. I'm other than, the uh, store. Yeah, mm -hmm. other than to promote your business. Yeah. So it is like we are uh, consumers of the Western culture other mm -hmm. than embracing our cultures. Mm -hmm. So I think... And what makes us do so? Mona to take a culture to... Basically, I think we are, we are, we are... It is called neocolonialism. To some mm, extent, got it. Neocolonialism. And neocolonialism. Yeah. neocolonialism. We mm. are made to feel that we are so inferior. Mm, and but the white man is superior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, whenever we meet Kenyans, mm. the first thing, like, uh, somebody can meet me with a nice attire. Instead of appreciating in a positive way, mm. <laughs> we'll give you <laughs> some negative thoughts. Yeah. You know, suit in your mighty. You know, what such kind of. What is this? <laughs> yeah, such you know? kind of. Uh, <laughs> So, <laughs> to some, uh, to some, yeah. like somebody yeah. will literally tell you that. Yeah, they troll you because they can't afford it. They're jealous, some are they're just mad that they can't afford it. I think they're just it. jealous. So, uh -huh. we have a negative compliment. So, to a young entrepreneur who's mm -hmm. starting a business, if you, are, you don't have that hard heart, a stone mm. heart, a steel heart, my friend, you'll fall down. <laughs> At a city, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some. Yeah, the people believe. And some people will even tell you, man, suits are for people who have gone to gym. You are so ah. skinny, you, are, you don't want to wear this. Yes, kind of suit. Yeah, so. At a city, you have to a gym. Yeah, so such kind of things, um, I think. It's a mentality. Is a mentality that if you consume it and mm. it sinks into your unconsciousness, then mm. I think it will destroy your. Uh, uh, <laughs> self esteem at the end Nibula of the day. Of <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. the wrong one. Hey. Mm. So I, I, I'm shocked, I'm stunned, to be honest. Like somebody would hold such a very strong negative belief towards something yeah, that's, that's attractive. Actually, ask, ask most designers in Africans. Mm. People don't appreciate them. Because mm. whenever you do something and you don't feel appreciated, the tendency of you not giving, uh, of giving up they're so, is so high. Yeah. Uh, for example, in a school setup. Right. You really try your best to perform and nobody notices you. Right. You have really pulled, you have gone from 
number last you are now in the, like apo katikati and nobody appreciates you you yeah. are like why am i doing this but yeah. whenever you have a support system the people who support you they tell you oh man he look up they big you up eh he look ni normal sana so you find like you you get encouraged right. so i get some people who dm me they tell me man Right. You are really doing a great job. Even they, even they don't promote their bus my business, but right. I feel so appreciated. Right. So I think if Kenya we develop that uh, support system of supporting each other right. and uh, also embracing our culture and going back to our roots, yeah. I think we can really go far as fashion is concerned. Right. Yeah. Um, you made me remember. There's, there's one of my guests here. He passed on, I think, last month. He, oh, I'm he, sorry for uh, that. But say again, I come One of the conversations he said, when you dress good, you actually feel good, and it doubles your confidence. <laughs> yeah. So, do you believe? Do you believe in that philosophy? When you dress good, you feel absolutely, good. absolutely. And, mm -hmm. Actually, I've met a lot of great guys. Uh, a lot of great guys, <laughs> mm -hmm. because I dressed well. Right. There's a time I met the deputy president of Kenya, Rigathi mm -hmm. Gashago, hey, because of just dressing well. In my head. <laughs> because I was just dressing in a suit, yeah. and I just followed those guys who were who were with suits, and they were just going to the office. Hey. And I just now Nani, now. Nani Nani now. So whenever you dress nicely, mm -hmm. even uh, you boost your self-esteem. Self-esteem. Self self-esteem, and nobody will judge you. Right. I've gone to great events uh -huh. because of just dressing people. People will mistake you. They'll say. Maybe this uh, is, is related to <laughs> Gashago. So just let him. Now, can you evo too? Nani can you evo? Wow. How yeah. did it go? Like, uko ndani sa? How did you sit? Se uli kawapi kwa kona katikati uli simama. There were okay. The guys started asking me, and I uh, was some janjes. You know, I'm from Kayola. I just say I'm a media personality. Uh -huh. I just came to to see you, what you're doing, guys. I'm going to cover your stuff, uh -huh. and that's how I got some connection from there. Uh -huh. So it is about if you dress well. Yeah, you feel good. And you feel and good, and, and also uh -huh. you create a certain impression, especially when you are meeting people for the first time. It's okay. really nice. Okay, and you are actually attractive when you dress well. And yeah, you feel good. sure, sure. Uh, but then there's also uh, a lot of fashion trends in your industry. Uh, uh, recently, we've seen a lot of color blocking. Um, a lot of uh, bright colors. Uh, men are now like being encouraged to also dress up in like uh, bold colors like pink. Uh, Jay Z called it mauve. Mm. You know, uh, I, I don't know what you think about that. Do you encourage men to have bold colors like pink uh, mixed up with another color? She's. Yeah, you know, fashion is about when you wear something is like you are trying to express yourself. So there's some people who feel that they want to to attract some people, they want to feel that uh, they want to be sent of attraction. So if you want to be sent of attraction, I, I would prefer you go to those uh, bright colors and whenever you. Okay. About fashion, the, uh, the whole thing about fashion is just feeling comfortable with, wo with what, what you're wearing. You wear. mm -hmm. Yes. So if somebody tried to blend with the pink and every stuff, mm -hmm. it's a way he just went to express himself. Or herself. Yeah, or herself. Because when I say my pink, I'm a damn son. I've <laughs> yeah. seen Jay Z, who I can say my name of. On a day, let's 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 imagine. Um, just a basic guy uh, who has a nine to five. A nine to five. That means they work in an office. Mm. Uh, possibly, if you can imagine his outfit in as a quadra, see suiti. Mm. But in the out, yeah, it's an ensemble that he's picking up from a shirt to a shoe to some pairs of socks. To a tie or maybe a blazer. In a kwaje your outfit, I'm say, and I work nine to five. Oh, in short, na taka dress, I'm say size, I'm pay instructions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay, nine to five. Uh, and is it in the office? Yeah, office setup, nine to five. Office setup. Okay. First of all, we have. Uh, if somebody comes to me like that, we'll always look for a a fabric that is so light. Light. Uh, so light because uh, in the office setup, you know, sitting to uh, sitting in one place for a long time, you will like uh, accumulate a lot of warmth and every uh, rest of the thing. So, first of all, we start with the fabric, a very light fabric. If you are sitting in the office, mm -hmm. and also a comfy like a comfy suit, also uh, the one that is not so fitting. So whenever you're working on your desktop or whenever you're working on your job, doing something, you'll feel so comfortable. No. Yeah. All right. Uh, on that note as well, uh, what are some of the fast, uh, I'll, I'll say maybe the worst 
the worst fashion mistakes that men make. And okay, I'm um some of every hey bro, no, you're like child, you need to do something. You need you you need you need you need a facelift for your fashion. <laughs> in, in short, it's a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah. Uh, fashion mistakes men make. That will kill you. I say, no, bro, on the vivo. You may chum up, we buy a sana. Oh, the first one. You you find people on the streets. They wear a track suit with official shoes. Yeah. My yeah. friend, that's yeah. a no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, and also over blending of colors. You mm -hmm. find that somebody. Red shirt, blue blazer, yeah. pink uh, trouser, red yeah. shoes. Man, you are. You are country. a whole rainbow, walking yeah. rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. For me, the most disgusting one should be uh, umeva Gucci, mm. uh, Jew, ume kala nyuele yellow, mm. then chini mongeza. Zinaitwa jizile nini za puma. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna Jordan, just mandiko. At a see Jordan, they're gonna label flani up. Yeah, label flani. Yeah. And you and and actually most people are not aware that they're mixing labels. Yeah. You know, sure. to only Gucci, it's fashionable. Yeah. Only yeah. Christian Dior, it's yeah. fashionable. Yeah. But then you you uh, to people who are fashion conscious or fashion sensitive like you are, mm. you're definitely seeing wardrobe malfunction. Yeah. What would you advise people that are not fashion sensitive or fashion savvy or conscious? of how they piece up their ensembles every day? I think the, it is so simple. I think the whole game is simplicity. Mm -hmm. Stay simple and classy. Simple or classy? Uh, simple and classy. Okay. You don't want to mix like a lot of stuff for you to look good. Just mm -hmm. do a simple thing. Okay. You can, uh, there's, a, there's a whole web, like right now, if you go to Pin Interest, it will give you ideas of how you, you're supposed to dress, Okay. I was supposed to acquire some cloth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's so simple. I think uh, everything is about simplicity. You don't have to overdo it for right. you to really look, look nice. All right. Yeah. Uh, back to the Kenyan industry. Do you feel like uh, the, the industry is going to a place... Uh, this is actually my last question before, <laughs> before you tell us where people can get you. Do you feel like the Kenyan in the fashion industry is, is still pretty young? And now we've integrated with the events, uh, the events industry. It's like they're trying to compete also for the same thing. But then we are, yes, we are in the same business, but we are competing for the same uh, market. And the Vilomesema, now we end up borrowing other people's cultures. Yeah. We prefer, uh, you'd prefer to wear what Nicki Minaj wore than what a Kenyan designer like you would design. Uh, uh, the Kenyan fashion industry is not young. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we are lacking as Kenyan fashion industry support 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 from the government mm -hmm. support from the the people around us mm -hmm. policies government policies that uh, will advocate to promote Kenyan uh, fashion industry yeah. I think that can really inspire people and yeah. also uh, also what we are lacking is an exchange program mm -hmm. if you can have like uh, top designers from Kenya yeah. being taken to other world to go maybe navigate or go mm -hmm. just tour how those people go through their um, their fashion industry mm -hmm. it can really work for us and also if the government can bring policies like we make our own things yeah. and uh, whenever we import them they are free from those taxes yeah. of uh, importation taxes i right. think as a as a country will go far right. because even the if the government can go outside and source and we just tell those people that we, we have a fashion here in Kenya mm -hmm. and we want to sell them to your people. A lot of people will agree, will agree to that. So yeah. I think what we are lacking, the Kenyan industry, fashion industry is not young because I met guys who have quit doing um, electrical engineering mm -hmm. to go do fashion. Like you, you studied economics. But me, I've not dropped out of You've school. You've not dropped it? I've not dropped out of school because okay. of fashion. But I found guys who are who are really passionate about fashion. Mm -hmm. But the, the problem that they had was uh, they didn't have that support. Proper, proper support. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, we are exiting. So if people want to consult you, you said you, co you can construct a person's outfit very fast. Where can they get you a number, social media? This is your camera. Oh, thank you guys. So you can promote my business and also <laughs> If you want an MC for your event, you can contact at Julimo Collection uh, on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, 
on, uh, on Instagram. And my number is 0768-84-1806. 0768-84-1806. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, but uh, as we go, who's the most fashionable politician? The more you may come across and say, hey, you fashion sense, yeah, can you call it? I can say Mike Sonko. Mike Sonko? Yeah. What about recently the president, his black outfit? I don't know if you saw it. Uliona? Yeah, you like black outfit. Yeah, sure. Ah, that was dope, man. The president is also doing well. Fashionable, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. We have been speaking to Julius Kiba Gendi. He is the CEO of Julimo Collections, telling us exactly, just in case, how, how now fashion sense, uh, by right now, at least you know, you know your way forward in between front and center. My good name is Sankwa. We take a very short break. We are coming back with much more still on that hashtag, which is why in the morning. I try to for channel everywhere at Brand Sakwa 101. We take a break. We come back with much more. Stick around.